talc has been classified as probably carcinogenic to humans by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. Wait a minute, though, before getting anxious, let's try to clarify. Today, we'll answer some questions like, if I use talcum powder, will I get cancer? Is it safe for babies and children? Is it true that talc contains asbestos? Well, let's explain step by step what probably carcinogenic means, why it's different from the definition of certainly carcinogenic, and why it has been classified in this way. In order to understand why talc has been classified as probably carcinogenic by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, it is necessary to take a step back and know that in nature talc is associated with asbestos. That's right, asbestos. It is therefore essential to understand talc from a chemical point of view, how it is extracted and why these two minerals are associated. We all know talc quite well. It looks like a white powder and it has various applications. It is used to prevent diaper rash or to absorb sweat and odors, and in general in the production of paper, cosmetics, fertilizing feed, medicines, and much more. This powder is of natural origin and is produced directly from a mineral, talc, which belongs to the silicate family and contains magnesium and silicon. More specifically, it is a mineral that is formed from pre-existing minerals. In this case, it is formed from other minerals that contain as we've just seen, magnesium and silicon. The problem is that in the conditions of pressure and temperature in which talc is formed, serpentine can also be formed, which is a mineral with a chemical composition similar to talc and which in its fibrous form is called asbestos. Therefore, given that talc and asbestos are formed in similar conditions and from similar rocks, it is quite common to find them associated in nature and consequently, when talc is extracted, it is possible to find traces of asbestos in different quantities. So are all talc products contaminated with asbestos? No, this is because there are also deposits that are composed almost entirely of talc. So in that case, you obtain a product naturally free of asbestos. And manufacturing companies also have the responsibility to carry out tests to ensure there are no traces of it in their products. Now, asbestos is a certain carcinogen, we know this well, which means it certainly increases the risk of contracting various types of cancer, including ovarian cancer. However, pure uncontaminated talc in itself is not carcinogenic. Be careful, this is important. Talc is certainly not a carcinogen. It has been classified as probably carcinogenic, which is different from definitely carcinogenic and specifically only for ovarian cancer. Does probably carcinogenic mean that I can probably get cancer, you might wonder? No, it doesn't mean that. I understand it may cause confusion, but behind the definition of probably carcinogenic, there's a complex explanation. Various substances can be divided into four categories, type 1 or certain carcinogenic substances, type 2A or probably carcinogenic substances, type 2B or possibly carcinogenic substances, type 3 or not classifiable as carcinogenic substances. Saying that a substance is of type 2A or probably carcinogenic can have different meanings. In the case of talc, it means three things. Number one, there is limited scientific evidence that demonstrates an increased risk of developing ovarian cancer, therefore not cancer in general, but that of the ovary. In other words, there is not enough evidence, not enough studies, and the research is not precise enough to confirm 100% that talc increases the risk of ovarian cancer. Number two, there is sufficient scientific evidence that cancer emerges in experimental animals. In other words, talc has been shown to increase the risk of contracting cancer in experimental animals. Number three, there is strong scientific evidence that talc increases the risk of developing cancer in human cells, therefore on slides. Now, I know that this explanation is complex, but these are the precise classification of substances and they require extra effort to be fully understood. Keep in mind though that we are only talking about ovarian cancer in women who have continuously used talc in the perineal region, the part that rests on the bicycle seat, so to speak, and endovaginal, therefore inside the vagina. We're not talking about the general use of talc, and it's not 100% certain that talc is the real cause. In fact, the group of scientists who analyzed these studies said that the possible increase in the likelihood of contracting cancer could be caused by the contamination of talc with asbestos, 
and not by the talc itself. This is because some of these studies are based on the declarations of women who said they used talc in their lives in the vaginal area. Therefore, they did not analyze the talc they had used, let's say, 20 years before. And consequently, it is impossible to exclude that it was contaminated with asbestos. This is very important to specify because it could be the asbestos present in trace amounts in some talc products that is causing the problem, not so much the talc itself. Additionally, only perineal and intravaginal use of talc is likely carcinogenic, not talc use in general. So let's say talc used under the armpits to absorb sweat is safe and does not increase the risk of ovarian cancer. Well, now that we understood this, what should we do? Should we worry? The short answer is no, we don't have to. According to what has already been reported by the Italian Association for Cancer Research, those who have used talc vaginally don't need to worry. In a preventive and precautionary way, however, experts recommend avoiding the use of perineal and endovaginal talc, while for all other uses, such as drying the sweat on the skin of newborns and children, for the hair, in short, for any use that is not perineal and endovaginal, there are no problems. Let's also make another example to understand why we don't have to worry. Red meat, so beef steak for example, is a type 2A carcinogen, so it is also probably carcinogenic. So, if I eat red meat, I'll probably get cancer? No, it doesn't work like that, but the advice is always the same. Limit consumption. The only thing you need to pay attention to is not to breathe in the talcum powder deeply, perhaps when it disperses in the air and forms a cloud. This is because breathing too much of this powder is associated with the onset of talcosis, a lung disease which, however, is mainly contracted by people who work in sectors that involve prolonged and continuous exposure. It is therefore primarily an occupational disease. In general, I would like to say a few words on the issue of cancer and carcinogenic substances. Thanks to the enormous work carried out by the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research on Cancer, we know for certain which substances in everyday life increase the risk of contracting tumors, and among these are certainly the most important. 1. Smoking tobacco. 2. Any alcoholic drink, including wine and beer. Yes, guys, wine and beer are certain carcinogens, and no, there is no safe quantity of alcohol. 3. A continuous and abundant consumption of processed meats, therefore sausages and hot dogs. 4. Significant exposure to air pollution. So, if we want to reduce the risk of cancer in general, let's focus on these substances and try to limit their exposure and or consumption. Limit them or even eliminate them if you can. Then, of course, it won't be that beer we drank that evening that will cause us cancer. That's because, as we know, it's the dose that makes the poison. So, the more you smoke, the more you drink, the more you abuse processed meat and the more polluted air you breathe, the more the probability of cancer increases. But it is right to be aware of which substances are most dangerous to our health, and talc is not one of them. Guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope the issue of cancer and the classification of probably carcinogenic is now a bit clearer, understood as different from definitely carcinogenic, carcinogenic type 1, and the issue of talc. Anyway, guys, we'll always see each other here on Geopop Everyday Science.